Hi and welcome to another video. Today's an exciting one. We are trying out the Home Assistant voice device. I bought this as soon as I heard it came out. One of my friends texted me, told me about it, so I bought it. It was, I think, 60-ish dollars. Um, and I'm excited to try this thing out. Essentially, this device is like a Google Home Mini in the sense that it is a voice assistant and you are able to give it verbal commands um, just like you would with any other Google device. Um, this isn't just Google, it like is similar to an Alexa as well, but. Here it is, this is what it looks like. So we've got uh, on the bottom here, we have a USB-C port for power. We've got a aux port for um, audio, obviously. Got the kill switch right here for the microphone. On the top, we have a button that can trigger it and a knob for volume. Um, and that is pretty much all that there is to it. On the bottom right here, there's a Grove port. I'm not sure what that's for, um, but you'll see it does have two microphones on the top and the speaker um, is integrated in the device. Um, the device does not apparently come with a uh, power adapter or power cable or anything. Um, and it, actually, I do remember seeing that it is because they want to uh, reduce emissions or something. I don't know. Uh, we have a sticker in the box. We have a OK Nabu. Let's get started and a warranty and safety information sheet as well. So in this clip right here, I'm going to set up the device, uh, hopefully grab a power cable for it and we'll get it booted up and we can hopefully add it to Home Assistant as well. Okay, so I grabbed a power adapter here. Apparently any USB-C power adapter should be okay. This cable is a bit unique in the sense that this USB-C cable tells me how much power the device is using. So that'll give us a nice indication of the amount of power that is being used by the device. Um, so I plugged it in and I had not seen any activity light and now I do. So you'll see it's kind of doing that pulsing thing. It is kind of orange-ish uh, and it is um, booting up into the uh, software on the device. One quick note right here was that the device was connected to Home Assistant through Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, that's how the setup process took place. It was not over Wi-Fi or anything. You typed in the Wi-Fi network kind of during the setup screen. And I'll show that on the screen right here. I did a screen recording of it. Uh, essentially, it just discovers it over Bluetooth Low Energy on your phone, and then you're able to add it into Home Assistant from there. Okay, so here on the Home Assistant website, we can see that we have to do a few things to kind of prepare Home Assistant, get the text assistant stuff going. Um, and we can get all of the um, things installed, the prerequisites installed before we actually use the device. One thing I did want to mention though, is that this device is only taking about zero to one watts, which means it's taking like no power at all. Um, so that's really cool to see how low power of a device this is, uh, because you don't want your smart home devices just sucking power because that adds up quickly if you have a lot of these devices. I'm gonna focus on getting this thing set up and installed and we will be back as soon as I can do that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up the device on Home Assistant. This is what it looks like now that it is all adopted and set up. If you want to look at the instructions on how to do it, it's available on the Home Assistant website. Now here we have the device. I'm going to try it out. You'll see the blue lights above, above my head, and those will change based on what I say. So here's an example. Hey Jarvis, turn off the server room bars. So it's a little bit delayed there, obviously, but it is pretty cool. It does work like it's intended to, and it's fully running locally here on Home Assistant from what it sounds like. Uh, it's running on a virtual machine that I have on one of my servers downstairs, and it's working pretty well. So it's pretty fast considering it's fully local and doing all the voice processing here. Um, it's pretty impressive as well. It does pick up on a lot of things. So hey Jarvis, turn on the server room bars. So you'll see it's a couple seconds there, but um, honestly from Home Assistant um, or from Google Home in the past, it takes a couple of seconds anyways, especially when it goes out to connect to Home Assistant to change uh, the lights that you triggered. So it's pretty cool to see that um, this is working so well just right out of the box. This is a preview edition. I didn't mention it earlier, but this is a preview edition device. So this is not the final product that they will ship. Uh, it likely will change a little bit based on just changes that they'll make to the design to improve it. Uh, based on users feedback and stuff um, as they receive feedback from people uh, i just got this device today so it's still fairly new i um, in that sense but yeah so it's really exciting really great progress that's being made in the home assistant community i'm excited for home automation and to see what the future holds with uh, artificial intelligence and the improvements that are being made around the clock to home assistant and other home automation platforms uh, this is really cool and i can see myself probably using it a lot the speaker sounds decent. I can't figure out how to play anything to the speaker. 
um, in terms of like media through Home Assistant. Um, so that's, you just have to trust me on that one that the speaker is decent. It sounds good for the voice at least. Um, hey Jarvis, what's the weather like today? You'll see it's doing some processing there and I get no response. So it's a little buggy still. I don't know if it's supposed to respond like a voice assistant. I didn't look too much into this device at all, um, but I can tell you uh, for a fact that it does to control the lights pretty well. And that's pretty much all I need it for. There's also the button on the top where I, you can manually activate the voice just like this. So you'll see that blue ring that circles the device and that's showing that it is listening. Um, if I switch this side, this uh, lever on the side here, you'll see it goes in this mode right here where it's just circling and now it's red. Uh, that shows that the uh, microphone is now off and muted and it is a hard cutoff on the microphone so it essentially just unplugs the microphone from the device so there's no chance that your voice can be heard and you'll see as i switch it back it goes back into that state you can hear that sound effect there it's kind of nice as well so yeah what do you think leave a comment down below I'm really excited for this um, I'm hoping the cost of this can come down. It looks like a pretty simple device. I heard the device runs on an ESP32 board, so uh, it should be pretty low cost once they get the um, product into mass production. Um, but yeah, really exciting. Like I said, leave your comments down below. I'm excited to hear what you think. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.